morning. Welcome back. You're still watching Debrek on this 23rd day of October 2023. And I want to introduce the panelists here in studio. We have uh, Robert Mboy, the Member of Parliament for Kathiani Constituency, but also the Deputy Minority Leader of the National Assembly. Good morning. Morning, Sam. Duncan Madenge is the Member of Parliament for Nyeri Town Constituency, but also a member of the Health Committee of the National Assembly. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. We have uh, Dr. Simon Kigondu, who is the president of the Kenya Medical Association. Good morning. Good morning. Great. And we have uh, Nelson Koech, member of parliament, Bill Good, and chairperson of the Defense, Foreign Relations and Intelligence Committee. Good morning. Morning, Sam. Good morning, Kenyans. Great. And this morning, uh, we continue with a conversation of what just happened uh, last week, the signing into law of the four laws that now guide the management of the health care services in the country, a lot of conversations that you also find a bit of it on the front page of the daily, I mean of the standard, tighten belts as Ruto care comes, it comes at an extra cost with a new formula for contribution to Medicare starting, uh, or steering rather, employees will have to pay more to realize the president's dream of affordable health care for all. And of course, we'll be having a touch on that later on, but it appears that um, the report is basically on the contributions. Remember that the regulations are not yet out to determine how much that should be, but the president is already speaking about a rate. We will discuss that. On the front page of the Daily Nation, it is Kenya's phone theft syndicate talking about Mondays come with long queues at Safaricom Airtel shops as victims replace SIM cards and talking about what exactly happens, that phones are flushed and smuggled to neighboring countries and are ready market then we are all equal shareholders Gashago says from where my boss dr ruto and i sit the elections are over and we want all kenyans to unite for the sake of the development of this country an election is like a sport and should not cause any enmity amongst kenyans but there's something that happened yesterday that i want us to have a mention about and you find it on page four of the daily nation president ruto now plays down widely predicted el nino rains Climate scientists uh, cautions uh, Kenyans not to let the guard down. Um, early in September, IGAD announced the possibility of the region experiencing heavy rains. Of course, we know here in the country some money had been set aside to go into addressing what would appear to have been an emergency. In fact, some work has been done. Uh, the cleanup that witnessed at least in Nairobi, uh, the capital city, um, clearing the drainage in readiness for the rains. Now, the president spoke yesterday, and this is what he said in regards to El Nino. Hata juzi, mulisikia tukawa na habari pengine kutakuwa na El Nino, ambaye itaharibu kule, itaharibu malingine, lakini mungu ni nani, mumesikia wale watu wamesema tena, ile El Nino haita kueko, wamesema kutakuwa tu na mvua kubwa, lakini haita pika pale ya kuharibu. So, na hiyo mvua nyingi ambayo tutapata, pia tumejipanga katika hii eh, eh, short rains, tumepanga pia wakulima watuzalishie chakula tena. So that we have another harvest by January or February. Na ndio niliwaeleza ya kwamba njia ya kuondoa matatizo ya njaa Kenya. Sio maandamano. Na kama ni maandamano, ni maandamano shambani. Okay, so there's a quote here on the Daily Nation. Um, climate scientist Yunis Goetch saying that people assume that uh, since the, the sun is out in Nairobi, then there's no El Nino. We may not pin down exactly why it is hot, but it doesn't mean we don't have El Nino. Well, there's another coach here who is in studio. <laughs> to tell me about, I mean, what is this? It, it appears quite strange that a president now is the one who is talking about whether it's going to rain or not. I had personally cast doubts about uh, the, the, the predictions that had been given. Well, you saw we're in the age of uh, global warming. The weather patterns have become extremely erratic, and sometimes it's a bit difficult to even scientifically uh, project on when it will rain and, of course, when we'll have extreme weather. Mm -hmm. uh, but on this one, I was uh, a bit skeptical. I've mentioned to many friends, including you, that uh, it was... I don't know where the Kenya Meteorological Department got this information from. I've tried. I tried to look at all the science involved and I couldn't find anything that could point towards uh, that end. Nonetheless, I think it's important as a country to prepare for any kind of weather patterns because it's erratic, as it was said. 
And, but it is also prudent to make sure that since there were money that had been already uh, allocated as a emergency uh, prepared preparations for El Nino, it is important then to make sure that there was prudent use of those resources. Because I know there were people who really were itching, their hands and fingers were itching to, to tap on that money of uh, El Nino mm -hmm. to quickly make some quick pack. It is important to make sure that as a government, we as members of parliament are extremely going to oversight to make sure that any money that had been taken for that purpose has been uh, fully used for it. It's not bad to prepare. I mean, if it didn't happen, it might happen in future. We must always be prepared for such weather. The only problem now is the people who already had been told, because of course, we also rely on the weathermen to tell us when to plant and when not to plant. So people had started preparations of their land uh, and this in anticipation for El Nino, and now it's not happening. So you wonder what will, what will happen with the farms. In fact, there are people who harvested so early from my region because of the rains are elevated at least now, and of course, Transoia and Wazingishu. People have harvested the maize that were on the farms uh, before time. So it means, again, we will need storage for such uh, uh, perishable, some of the, some of the harvests, mm -hmm. and, and that is expensive for the farmers. So at least also the government should be able to mop up what has been harvested before time. But nonetheless, it, it was an important thing. The president has come out to say we might not have a Nino. I'm sure he was also speaking from the position of how he's been advised by the weather, weathermen. It's important now to, like I said, to make sure that we check on how much money has been used and, 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 and that there is no corruption that came in between. Why do you suspect there's corruption? Because it's, it's, you know, when you call it an emergency, then of course it's, it's open, there are gaps. It's not an, a competitive process for tendering of anything that was needed. So you open up uh, the procurement process to, not to scrutiny, because now you're just picking anyone who can supply things so quickly because in anticipation of the heavy rains. But don't you find it strange that um, the meteorological department would communicate to the country that there's going to be this phenomenon, then it is the president who comes and announces, no, they have changed their prediction or projection. There is something that, I've, uh, that I think, and, and I think it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a, it's been a systematic uh, failure mm. where from uh, even we as members of parliament and, and, and the executive, mm -hmm. uh, largely, because meteorological, Kenya Meteorological Department, mm -hmm. uh, I will be very uh, I'm uncertain, but I can say this, that I doubt the kind of equipment they use for mm -hmm. weather prediction. Is, is, is what is used now in the, in, the, in the international stage. I think we still need to improve our meteorological department, make sure that we resource them adequately. If you look at the budget of what we allocate the meteorological department of this country, it's horrible. Those people complain permanently. You will be shocked that there some of the weather equipment that are being used today in the meteorological department, as some of them are obsolete, they're not even being used. Okay. They don't make sense, uh, you know, it, it, we have to, in the global uh, meteorological. So, so you think the errors in the instrumentation? It is in the instrumentation, weather but, predictions. But, but then again, how do they know now that? Uh, do you even have an app right now from uh, Kenya Meteorological Department that can tell you the weather today, the weather patterns today in Kenya? None. What we have here is a global one that is used. Okay, okay. Actually, what I have in my app mm. is, is, is an Apple one. So I always refer to it. Sometimes it's correct, sometimes it's not correct. But we need to have an homegrown uh, meteorological department weather patterns that is, is, is being made by our own meteorological department. Okay. D Dr. Terry, what are your thoughts about this? Because the country had actually been preparing, not just um, um, in thought and uh, physically, but also setting aside resources. A few weeks later, it is not going to happen. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, in life, I think uh, for everything, including illness, um, you need to be prepared all the time. So we are happy that our president has declared uh, that probably um, the funds set aside will not necessarily need to be used for El Nino. It's not a bad thing. Uh, I think occasionally negative messaging forgets the positive one. And the positive one is that currently we have um, hospitals that have not been paid by NHIF. A lot of money, a lot of hospitals are closing. Uh, there is a, I'm in groups where they are always uh, telling me that we haven't been paid these amounts of money. NHIF at one time owed hospitals a lot of money. And a lot have ground to a halt. 
And um, therefore, when you have a blessing, like money set aside for El Nino not being utilized, then we can easily transfer them and actually pay people who are providing health services. And if today NHIF can actually be given the El Nino money, then they would actually be able to pay because people are crying. Hospitals are closing. Mm -hmm. Doctors have not been paid. I'm a victim myself. I can't pay some of my debts because the work I did, I haven't been paid for. So NHIF needs to be funded. The money is for old debts. There is debts dating back to 2016, 2017. And I'm hoping my health committee boss here can actually look into this issue and urgently address these funds. Let mm -hmm. us give this money of El Nino to NHIF so that they can clear it. Is, is it that easy? <laughs> <laughs> it is easy. If you have uh, planned to utilize money for something that doesn't happen, there's a concept of reallocation. I used yeah. to be a medical superintendent in Isiolo in 2007 to 2013. And monies that are not utilized, and I'm sure the Honorable uh, Zia will know, it can be reallocated. Okay. Yes. All right. Mushima um, Madenge, so tell me, what are Kenyans supposed to think uh, with this information, but also at a time that um, there has been challenges, challenges in trusting the institutions that the country has, how then are we supposed to treat the Kenya Met? Yeah, uh, thank you, Sam. I, I, I think this should be a, is a wake-up call. It's actually a wake-up call for all of us as, as Kenyans. In terms of how fit for use are our institutions. We have institutions where the technology that is in use mm -hmm. is obsolete. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the recent past, we've had the opportunity to travel to Colombia with the deputy president. And one of the institutions we, 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 we visited was the uh, Colombian uh, Coffee Research Institute. And we found that uh, in that institute, and the research is only on coffee, they have got uh, weather pro uh, prediction and weather monitoring stations. Some manual and some uh, that are completely digital. The digital ones, we were told, were filing reports every seven minutes. Mm -hmm. And that is the kind of question I would ask. How, uh, the kind of equipment and technology that we have at the meteorological department in Kenya, how good is it for current day uh, weather monitoring and weather forecasting. And therefore, what we find is that we may not be able to monitor the Kenyan microclimate or even the East African region microclimate, but we are relying on global satellites where the, 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 the uh, weed and air and uh, precipitation movements mm -hmm. may be way off the mark. Uh, at the same time, I'm asking myself whether we needed to wait for El Nino, for Nairobi City Council or Nyeri County Government to clear drainages. We didn't need to wait for that. It should be part of our, part and parcel of our normal operations. And uh, of course, there is a question of uh, the abuse of emergency funding whenever it has been uh, uh, available in this country. Mm -hmm. We saw it during the COVID-19 era uh, with KEMSA and what came to be later called COVID billionaires. We've, we've seen it uh, with um, whenever we've had drought and we've money for uh, livestock uptake. Uh, we've seen it when we have had drought and we have money for supplementing feeding. And therefore it is important also that we tighten our regulation laws and financial laws so that specifically the provisions for emergency procurement are not do not leave such huge gaps for 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 abuse mm -hmm. and and here is a challenge to us as members of parliament because we are the lawmakers and even as some of these things are put in regulations by by the executive we still have a say uh, and, and 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 should be better mm -hmm. at scrutinizing the regulations and playing our oversight role. The money that is available, of course, as uh, Dr. Tari says, I would ask myself how much of that money was in the health sector. And therefore, how better should we, as the health sector, utilize and direct the money? Mm -hmm. uh, if we had money for El Nino in roads, can we really be able to move it to, to health? You find uh, the road sector is also struggling with its own burden, and therefore uh, it could be uh, more prudent to channel the money there. However, it is important that we 
begin to question every institution in this country to find out how fit for use okay. are the, our institutions. Okay, interesting. And, and if you look at the projections that came from the Kenya Met, horrible Mbui, is that um, the country was going to experience uh, above average um, rainfall. Um, what are you reading with this change of uh, is a projection, despite having seen the deputy president um, having a, conversations, a conversation with governors and saying that um, 10 billion shillings has been set aside for this? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Sam, first and foremost, I want to say that the issue of uh, disaster preparedness is not a joke. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we've grappled with this issue from time immemorial. Every time we have heavy rains, uh, you know, we, there is so much uh, devastation that goes around, so much destruction as a result of the rain. Roads are washed away, um, bridges are washed away, you know, many roads become impassable. Uh, property is destroyed, and we 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 we, we complain. We, we we make a lot of noise, and uh, and, and and you know it, because of that. And whenever there is no rains, now again we start complaining. There is no rains, so or there is no food. So we really are a complaining nation. It's a very unfortunate situation. But let me say that uh, we have to be very careful because you know there is what we are calling climate change. We had the we had the the, the, the discussions on climate change. Uh, you know, uh, all all, the, all 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 the leaders from the region were here. Uh, discussing climate change. That already tells you that, uh, you know, things are not as they were before. And so even whether pattern predictions are changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the countries with the best uh, technology are still being hit by, by hurricanes, by tornadoes, and they didn't know, they couldn't predict. Sometimes they're able to predict correctly, other times they're not. But look, um, let me just say this. Uh, William Samuel Ruto is, uh, last I checked, was a botanist or zoologist. I don't know when he became an expert on weather issues. Because I want to say Kenya Kwanza regime must understand and believe in, in experts and start respecting experts. You know, the president cannot be the one telling us there will be no and you know. Let me tell you how powerful the, pre the president's word is. Those people who are believing that there will be El Nino and probably were preparing to move their homes or to protect themselves, suddenly from the word of the head of state, they will stop it. And what happens, Sam, if El Nino does materialize? Because I'm telling you, his comments are not going to stop it if it is going to happen. He even invoked the name of God, which he keeps doing. I mean, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not even fair. Oh, you know, God is good to us because they'll know. How do you, how do you know there'll be no El Nino? So if El Nino comes, are you going to turn and tell us now God has become bad? I want to say, let Kenya Kwanzaa regime Believe in experts, let the experts be the ones to give us the predictions. If the predictions are wrong, and it is the other team that has given us that prediction, then we will not blame the government. But when the government uh, leader gets involved and tells us, oh, now, don't worry, it will be just slightly above average, uh, or, or it will be heavy rains. Heavy rains are not scary. Heavy rains don't, uh, there is no need for disaster preparedness. Mm. But the honorable member for, you know, honorable Nelson Koeja has just told us that uh, there, is, there seems to be something that we are not being told. And, and I like when he speaks because he tells us the truth. Sometimes, you know, you have to read it between <laughs> the lines. And he said, you know, there are people who are waiting for that money. Mm -hmm. Might that be the reason that now we've been told there is no, there is no El Nino? So that maybe we can, uh, we, you know, the money that was already earmarked to be stolen. He, he, he may need to tell us who was about to steal the money because he knows. <laughs> but but I, I want to say that uh, on a serious note, I would advise that we just be prepared, as we were told earlier, because weather patterns change. And they okay. change very unpredictably in the recent past. Mm. Yes. Okay, oh, all right. Some. I don't know if you want a rate of reply. No, no, no I do. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Sam, Sam yeah. I, is it really long for the president to relay that message? The president did not just wake up and relay that message to Kenyans. I am sure that uh, it was on the basis of some information yeah. placed before him mm. by experts. And he's briefed on uh, what happens in the country, and we should give him the leeway to pick what to communicate. Okay. And as, as, as you see it, even as he's talking about it, he's also uh, laughing about it. So it's, 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 it means that even for him, it looks like, well, what just happened here? But at the same time, somebody has to bear the news. Is this bad news? Is it good news? But, but I think what he's talking about is they are experts on precisely, precisely. the meteorological uh, department. Should they be the ones speaking? And I am sure that the experts, the experts have the same message that the president relayed to the nation.
Okay. All right, Honorable Madenge, I want us to take a short break um, from the conversation on El Nino rain. So when we come back, we'll be speaking about the health sector and the four new laws and the changes that are, are happening. Just stay tuned for that.